Hi, welcome to Wandering Into the Woods, a podcast brought to you by the creators of Adventures with BG. I'm Linda. And this is Jarrett. And today we'll be talking to you about our visit to see some dinosaur tracks over in Leander on the San Gabriel River. So uh, when did Texas have dinosaurs? That's a pretty good question. I think where we, I think we should start. Um, I personally did not know until a few years ago that Texas used to uh, be the habitat and home to dinosaurs. It makes sense. Obviously, the entire earth was home to dinosaurs at some point or another. But, you know, growing up in South Texas, I never heard a lot about dinosaurs. But um, so when Jared said, hey, you want to go look at some dinosaur tracks uh, out in Leander? I said, definitely, because I haven't seen that many out here in, in Texas. And uh, so... As we were getting ready to go out there, I did start looking up the history of this area, and I'm going to heavily quote at homeinleander.com, and uh, the website creator here, uh, I, the realtor is actually Betty Signs, and I think it's her realty um, website, but she gave a really good summary of what this whole area in Central Texas used to be before, and it used to be... Um, Basically, she, she talks about how in during the Cretaceous period, I honestly don't know where that falls as far as the dinosaur timeline or the Earth timeline. But during the Cretaceous period, um, dinosaurs walked through the tidal flats and sank into the squishy mud, leaving footprints. Prehistoric ocean tides brought in clay and soft silt particles to fill the footprints. Our severe jaws in Texas baked the layer containing the tracks to become a hard limestone. The filler material eroded over time to expose molds of the dinosaur's feet. I think this website very well summarized how these tracks were created. Mm -hmm. Now, what are they? Um, they're a series of 12 very clearly printed uh, dinosaur tracks. And what you see when you go there are just like, a, I, don't, I don't know, like a fork print is what I want to say. Like a, some, definitely a dinosaur that had three um phalanges toes. Toes, <laughs> what would you call them they're i don't know toes. Uh, i i guess toes don't stop being toes just because they're on a dinosaur anyway so it had three toes and um according to this website again at home in leander.com um they are the footprints of an i'm gonna see if i can pronounce this an acrocanthosaurus nailed it <laughs> acrocanthosaurus um um, this was a, a, a carnivorous dinosaur. Now, some people say that they can also see the footprints of another uh, uh, her herbivore dinosaur, but I, I don't know. I, I didn't. I wasn't able to see them. But at least the, these uh, three fingered footprints that you see out there. Toad. Three toed. Okay. Three toes. Whatever. Anyway, three toed fingerprints. Footprints. Footprints. Yeah, three toed footprints you yeah. see out there. Fingers go with hands. And <laughs> handprints. Toes go with footprints. Well, how do you, how do, how, we don't know if it was doing push ups. Probably not if it was walking. <laughs> it's not CrossFit. Now, um, what, I, I, we don't, we're not really sure what this dinosaur would look like, but um, according to his website, it, it's probably looked like a smaller version of, of the T Rex. And uh, it probably, how much smaller? We don't know. I did take a picture for scale, which I might post on my Instagram or give for you to post later okay. uh, to give you a, a, like a like a demonstration of for scale mm -hmm. um, for you to see. But this dinosaur was supposed to be um, supposed to be uh, very common in Texas, Oklahoma and Wyoming. Um, that's where most of its uh, fossils uh, remains have been found. Um, but maybe it could have been all over North America. We don't know. It's just that most of its remains have been found in these areas. Wasn't Texas also part of the Gulf at some point? Yeah, I don't know where all in the timeline. What's the timeline, Linda? That's why I, I don't know because, well, what you're bringing up is a good point because if all along the San Gabriel, Gabriel you'll see... Um, San Gabriel River? All along the San Gabriel. I'll say that. Okay. Because that I can't pronounce. You'll see, um, you see the layers of history and uh, you see uh, a lot of fossils, of shells, etc. And you wonder why, like what are ocean... What are the fossils of ocean objects doing on the river? And if you... Organisms? Yeah, okay. of ocean organisms doing along the river. And you also find out that at some point, Central Texas used to be part of an ocean as well. The Gulf, I believe. Gulf of Mexico. It just extended further. 
I'm not sure. I think there was some like another another name for the probably for the and we talked about it in a previous episode, but I'm not sure. Did we? I don't think we've ever named a body of water besides a river or a lake. I think I did in the um, when we talked about the caving. Oh, maybe. And how those uh, those how the underwater um, what do you call them? Lake underwater lakes were formed. Mm-hmm. It has to do with those oceans. Anyway, um, but along the San Gabriel River, if you you're ever you know, looking for something to do or you like to research and um, try to see what fossils you can find, the San Gabriel River is a great place to look because in it, um, you know, especially during the summer when it's not really uh, fi- full to, to the brim and there's not a lot of rain coming in. It's a lot the of- South Fork, San Gabriel, so there's never a whole lot of water in it unless it's flooding. Well, yeah, in, the, in that particular area. So just be careful um, it's a great area to explore. Um, I keep saying, like I keep saying, for different eras of the of the Earth, um, as it has existed over the millions of years. Um, all I will caution you to say is, although the the riverbed is mostly dry during the summer, if it's going to be raining, if it's if there's going to be inclement weather, be cautious and maybe reconsider going on your trip. You never know with flash floods or any sort of um, flooding. Um, uh, events that might happen, just keep it safe. But other than that, if it's the summer or just dry time in Texas, I really recommend you visit the spot. And I can't take credit for the one that like came up with the idea. It actually came from Instagram. Oh, uh, yeah. Someone gave me the tip, Blue Marble Soul. So mm-hmm, nice. that's how I got the uh, the idea to go out there. So it, it was definitely a worthwhile trip. Well, thank you, Blue Marble Soul. So if you're looking for the dinosaur tracks in Leander, you can actually find them in Google. If you try and drive there, uh, don't actually follow the directions because it'll just take you into the neighborhood and tell you to park at a house and want you to, like, jump down, like, a 50-foot cliff through someone's backyard. Yeah, so don't do that. What you actually need to do is when you get to 183, it'll tell you to turn left. Um, Between the two roads, there's, like, some electric stuff and a fence. Park there. I read somewhere it was, like, a phone company. Sure. Where the phone company keeps its... um infrastructure i don't know what to call it okay um so park there um it's a dirt lot um it's a little bit tough to pull into where the road and the dirt meet so just kind of be careful look for a flatter spot if you're just in a car or something but yeah park there don't follow uh gps all the way uh once you get there you can go around all that equipment either the left or the right it doesn't matter if you go to the left side looking at the river it's slightly shorter yeah, just uh, if you're gonna park in that area outside, make sure you're not park you're not parking in a way that blocks the um, access uh, vehicle access from that parking area to the actual riverbed. Because I read somewhere that the phone company might need it, hmm. so that that's a good point to keep in mind. We didn't, and I mean, generally there will probably be other other cars out there where you know, kind of showing you where to park. Yeah, we definitely saw some. Yeah, and we saw tire tracks as we were walking down to the riverbed. And so when later on when I read online, oh, that's where the phone company, what the phone company uses to reach the riverbed. Okay. Apparently, it's also where, like, local folks and stuff go to, like, drink and leave trash, too. There was quite a bit of that on the walk down. Um, But once you walk down, you'll get to the river. um, You'll take a left, and that's the way to the dinosaur tracks. It's not an official... State park. I think we should mention that state or county park or okay. yeah, it's this, it's the riverbed, literally the riverbed of the San Gabriel. Pretty much. So don't expect it to be maintained or you know uh, have any benches, restrooms, etc. It has nothing of the sort. Yeah, there's nothing. It's so. literally the riverbed. As we talked about in the Narrows episode, it kind of falls under that same aspect where you're allowed to go down the riverbed because it's Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, land. Mm-hmm. So. Same concept here, pretty sure. I'm not sure if the San Gabriel is navigable or not under law, but I assume that it is. And that's what allows you to go down there. So once you get down off this, you know, road and tire track, you'll hang a left and you're literally just on the San Gabriel riverbed. One of the first things that you'll come across is an old bridge that went across it. Um, There's still some sections up, but it's got a gap. You can walk under it if you want, or you can walk in the gap where there's nothing over your head if you're scared. We, We didn't see any trolls. Nope. Um, and it's, there's not a whole lot of, when we went, there's not a whole lot of water there. It was very, very dry, except for, you know, like a one foot wide stream, pretty much flowing through the the hard rock there. And it's, it's all hard rock. So, and we went in July. 
of 2020, just FYI, in case you're listening to this later. Yeah, so it's all hard rock. I don't know if it's limestone. I assume that's what it is, but it could be something else. I'm I know. I, I read, oh, and I think it's the same website that I referenced earlier. Mm-hmm. Linda, the um, geologist, has the answer. Yeah, I, I, it's limestone. Okay. It, it's limestone, and it's not the... Um, that's what Central Texas is, so... It, at home in Leander says, yeah, uh, they, they talk about that because... Uh, it's yes, it makes the trek a little bit slippery at times. Yeah, if it's when, wet, if it's real wet, slippery. But it's also what's helped us preserve those dinosaur tracks. Okay, so yeah, um, you'll get past the bridge. It'll be real dry in this section if you go on, you know, low water times, and you'll just keep going. Um, it'll surprisingly turn into full river. I don't know about two hundred, three hundred meters in. For all you Metrex yeah, it's not people. De- it's not like deep all of a sudden. It's though. not yeah, and so that's one of the things that a lot of people do is go out to the uh, dinosaur tracks and swim. Mm-hmm. But uh, it it kind of spreads out surprisingly because it's like one foot wide and then it's like fifteen to twenty foot wide. Right, and so you'll get to that part and you just kind of walk on the left side of the riverbank where there's more limestone, mm-hmm. and you'll follow it through tall grass and on your left there's some high cliffs and things. Now we didn't run across any critters but we i did hear a critter um following us for some um some of the trip i did but i don't know what it was um so just be cognizant as always when you're outdoors be aware of your surroundings did the frogs we saw not count as critters oh true and little fish we did see fish and tiny little frogs yeah um so you'll walk down but going back you'll walk down the uh the river bank for a while where it's real wide then it'll get narrow again and you'll continue down and at a river bend is kind of where the dinosaur tracks themselves are. It can be hard to miss. I kept my Google Maps open just uh, I'd have an idea. Yeah, but uh, fortunately for us, it's only about a mile out once you start your your. I think hike. it's like a half a mile. Okay, if that. So between, it's about a half a mile. So. Between half a mile to a mile, um, and we don't want to be exact, but uh, because the GPS was a little bit off as far as we know. And fortunately for us, a little kid with his family had already found those tracks for us. Yeah. And he was busy um, marking them with water. And of course, we're, you know, it's times of COVID. We're trying to keep our distance and stuff. So we're wearing, everybody's wearing their mask. And um, and he's just, he was busy trying to make sure that he could pour enough water into those um, dinosaur prints so that we could see what those prints uh, look like. Yeah. So if you want to take pictures or get a video, um, bring some sort of water container with you so you can fill up. The tracks from the river themselves, it'll make them more noticeable and have more pops. So if that's what you're trying to do is get some sweet pictures, you know, have a way to put some water in them. It'll make them stick out a lot more. But when we found them, you know, the the family was there. Uh, We went all, we kept going down further um, to where the limestone kind of ended. And we would have had to wade to keep going upstream, giving that family enough time to get their fill of the dinosaur tracks and to, you know, decide to move on. And so... We got to the end. Um, there's a little creek that comes into it, a uh, confluence. Um, they've got it fenced off. It looked kind of like a cool area, but don't go there, I guess, because they don't want you to. <laughs> or if you want to keep going up the stream, just be prepared to wade. Or Sorry, not stream, but river. Yeah. After that, uh, we turned around and started heading back. As we got back to the dinosaur tracks, the family was leaving, uh, so we were able to get a couple of pictures. Yeah, and um, we mentioned about... Uh, earlier it's very few uh prints i think there are a total of 12 um and it's um i I, you see some other prints i unfortunately didn't take a picture of them those might have been the ones of the herbivore that's supposedly out there unfortunately i didn't capture them but i you do see some other interesting shapes out there and it makes you wonder you know what else was out here so it's hard to tell what it is in limestone if it's just a lime limestone Mm -hmm. hole or something that's been eroded away or if it's another print uh, but yeah, so there's, they're in a straight line, so you can tell that it was actually walking somewhere mm-hmm. when you see them, and it goes towards the bank, and it just kind of ends where the limestone, there's like a little, I don't know, a two foot, three foot cliff where they kind of cut off. I mean, what if it was doing travel or pu- traveler push-ups? It might have been, but <laughs> I don't think it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then after we uh, we got, uh, I don't know, some pictures, um. I mean, it looked like it was going to rain, so we started going back. Uh, once we, you know, covered the same area, it looked like everyone that we'd seen on the way out there was also leaving. Mm-hmm. But we decided that it wasn't raining, so we would go a little bit downstream under 183. Right. 
That way, we were only able to make it about a quarter of a mile before the same issue happened, where we ran out of a bank on the side that was like limestone shelf or something. So it would have had to, uh, it would have required us to wade. Um, it didn't look very deep. I mean, in the center, you can tell where it's, it's pretty deep comparatively. It's not like over your head probably, but it's fairly shallow. And that was oh. confirmed because there was a dad with one to two kids, two kids, two kids out there fishing. So he was just standing and casting. So yeah. he's probably about another hundred meters down the downstream. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted to, it'd be a, probably a fairly easy wade without having to get too wet if you just took your shoes off. By that point, it started sprinkling a little bit, and that limestone had got, you know, fairly slick. Yeah, for sure. So I can't imagine, you know, how slick it would be during a hard rain, but it was it was definitely slick. So um, Yeah, Jared uh, has pretty good balance, and even he managed to slip up at some point pretty bad, but he was able to recover and yeah, not fall. I caught pretty myself. pretty cool. Yeah. I had both feet leave the ground, but, you know, I stayed upright, thankfully, because it would have been a hard fall on that rock. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, with the rain, we decided to go back. Uh, we ended up going on the other side that we didn't come down on the bridge, and there was a, a bunch of wildflowers, just a little bit. So I took the time to kind of photograph them. And at that point, you know, after I found like five various flowers and took some pictures, uh, we were back at the car. Yeah. And uh, that that was the extent of our trip. We Then we made the trip back home. Yep. So with this, uh, with the trip, you can definitely make it educational if you've, uh, I would say this Going back, this location is pretty family friendly. Um, it's a good place to bring the kids to do some education, learn about dinosaurs, that kind of stuff. And swim friendly. And also to swim. And the final thing is if you want to fish in the area, there seems to be small fish, but a lot of people out there are doing it. So family friendly, educational, swimming, and fishing. Those are all available. The hike, you know, you can only get about a mile, mile and a half total without waiting. So if you're going out for a hardcore hike, you're not going to find it there, but mm-hmm. if you're in the Austin, North Austin, Leander, Georgetown area, it's a pretty cool place, and it's definitely worth the trip. We definitely recommend it. For our next segment, uh, What the Haters Say, we'll be talking about some reviews of what people said about Leander Dinosaur tracks that, you know, seem kind of negative and in an absurd way. Yeah, so we have the Outbound Collective website. It has reviews of outdoors websites, and somebody there uh, left a one-star review saying, not worth it. And she said, we drove an hour to get here. And first off, there's no parking. You're just supposed to leave your car off the side 183. Second, you have to go under the underpass where it's clear people have come to drink slash homeless people live. Was excited to show to show my daughter the tracks, but it was so sketchy. We turned around after just getting to the bridge. One star. She clearly doesn't know what the term hidden gym means. Right. And it was two years ago. Yeah. If it's easy to find, then, you know, I don't know. I guess the harder the find, sometimes the uh, the better the location. Yeah. And maybe we don't know what time of the day or night she went. I mean, definitely. I don't know that I would feel going. I I would feel safe going out there at night by myself. I hope they wouldn't be going at night because. Right. Right. Seems kind of ridiculous unless you're specifically going for a night hike and they didn't sound like they were. Right. I'm just saying we don't know all the circumstances, but it, it did seem kind of like a really you're giving it a one star review and it's not even an official park. Yeah. Anyway. And then for our next one, um, it's a little bit of a confusing review in quotations. I don't like this place because it's a long walk, said the seven year old and more quotations. I approve and would give it five stars. Make sure you travel around the bend and look closely. It would be easy to miss the tracks, said the mom. One star review. Okay. That is confusing. Yeah. Why would they give it a, I don't know, I don't like this place and a five star, but then give it a one. I mean, at least meet in the middle. And then reference a seven-year-old child and then you're like, who, what? Yeah. It's a little confusing. It ended up being a one star. Didn't make any sense to me, but you know, there you have it. Wow. Looking for more opportunities to escape the quarantine? Read about some of Jared's and my adventures over the years at adventureswithbg.com. To see some of the pictures from our adventure over in Leander, to see the dinosaur tracks and other adventures, follow Adventures with BG on Instagram and Facebook. Those are the letters B and G at the end. As always, if you like this podcast, don't forget to subscribe or follow it in your favorite podcasting app. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please go ahead and leave us a five-star review. That'd be really cool of you. Thanks for listening, and as always, stay safe as you wander into the woods.